So, okay. Yeah, hello, everyone. So today's is a uh, session. We will talk about Q&A session on summer term, summer term courses. In case you had some questions, then you can ask us at the end of the session. So you can start writing them in the chat. So first of all, let me introduce myself. So my name is Aina. I am one of the advisors at the Academic Advising Office. Uh, and today, so let me start it. Okay, so these are the topics that we are going to discuss today in today's session. So first of all, there will be uh, the courses for summer terms that you can register, the registration priorities with dates and time, uh, also important dates such as add deadline, uh, drop deadline, the withdrawal deadline, and so on. Also for SSH students, there will be information on major declaration and major confirmation. Uh, also the Q&A, uh, like frequently asked questions on major declaration and confirmation. Uh, also for those who are interested in retaking the courses, how you can do it. Uh, the transfer process, maybe some of you are interested. And at the end, as I said, there will be Q&A part. So the course schedule for summer term was already posted so you should have um, the access to it so there are two slots two sections which are offered uh, as you can see in the example for example cs cscia 152 the course performance and data structures as you can see there is a date a days uh, in which you will have this lessons uh, on Monday and Wednesday, there is time slots at 12 and 12.50. And you can see that there is capacity that 24 students can uh, enroll uh, in for room, actually. Pay attention, please. If there is room scheduled, as in the example, you know, seventh block 522, it means that you are required to come to physically attend such lessons. Um, in case you register for such course, you agree that you will come, you will visit. Um, as you know, attendance is mandatory and it is very like, strict to attend the lessons. Uh, and in another example, you can see that Phil uh, 210 ethics course. Uh, also, there are days, like Tuesday and Thursday, there is time slots. 99.50. However, as you can see, there is no room, but instead it's written that it's online. Uh, capacity is zero. It means that this, uh, this course will be offered to you online. So please pay attention that most of the courses are uh, offered in person. And if you see that it's in person section, it will not be offered online. It's only in person. So if you register for such course, you should be ready to come and visit such lessons. Okay, further. So here are registration priorities for you, for first year students. So first priority opens for you on Monday, May uh, 16th at 1 p.m. Uh, second priority opens May 17th, Tuesday on 11 in the morning. And third priority opens at May on May 18th, Wednesday at 10 in the morning again. So three days in which you can register. Uh, another key dates uh, during the registration. So first three days are registration days. Then there is drop deadline, June 8th. In case you want, you've registered for some course, but for some reason you cannot attend, you cannot, um, um, you cannot take that course later, then you should drop it and no record will be made on your transcript. Uh, in case you will, um, you were waitlisted for such for some of your courses, then the waitlist will be dropped on June eighth at one, one p.m. Uh, starting from June eighth till June tenth, you can submit extra place. Uh, then at deadline, this is the last day when you can add uh, some course. That's June tenth at five thirty p.m. 
And this role period starts from June 13th till July 8th. So in case you could not drop a course, you can withdraw it. And actually, you know that if you withdraw, uh, the record will be made on your transcript. Okay, so here are the summer courses that you as a first year student can take these priorities. So this is the long list. So uh, as you can see, you can take core course in business, you can take uh, lab in general chemistry, you can take general chemistry two, you can take the course in Turkey and composition, history of Kazakhstan, ethics course, which is online, uh, CSA 152, then Kazakh 150, like basic Kazakh, uh, academic Kazakh one, academic Kazakh two, there is one advanced level Kazakh course, Kazakh 371, Calculus 1, Calculus 2, and Physics 1 available for you. So these are the courses that you can register for. So as you can see, there are not many courses, not all of the courses which are offered usually in spring and fall um, taught in summer, like some only like some of the courses. So in case there are the ones that you need, then yeah, you can register for it. Okay, so as I mentioned before, here's information for students of SSH, undeclared students. Um, just briefly um, reminding you in case what major you want to declare what you should have covered by now uh, or by the end of summer term, in case you are retaking something or um, something else, yeah, then you should uh, finish it. And actually the most of the students should declare it by now during the spring semester and further I will tell um, the details on how to do it. So as you can see in the table, these are the requirements that you should cover uh, for anthropology, economics, history, sociology, PSIR and world languages. So I think you already know it, so I don't need to explain to you. So here is how the process will work. Actually, right after the session, undeclared students will receive um, major declaration form on their email right after the session again. So in the form, you should choose the majors that you, you want to declare. In case you want to declare PSIR, as you know, there is ranking only top 80 students can actually declare PSIR. For you, you can choose one more option and you will be able to do it in the form. Uh, after, so you will complete the form, you will send it. After that, we will collect all the information. Uh, we will check your grades with the requirements that I've shown before in the table. Um, like in case there is TPA required, we will compare everything. It's, uh, in case everything is fine, so your major will be like changed in the system on the, you will be able to see it on the register and you will be actually assigned a faculty advisor. So this is actually for uh, all the first year students who um, like from SES, from Newsom and from SMG as well, that after complete the first year, students are assigned faculty advisors. So in deadline for completing major declaration form for undeclared students is next Thursday, May 19th at 12, at, sorry, at 2 p.m. Okay. So next is information for um, major confirmation for SSH students who are in biological sciences, chemistry, math, and physics. Again, you have uh, the bunch of requirements that should you should have come, you should uh, complete by the spring semester or by summer term in case you retake, you need to retake something. Um, there are some requirements left that you haven't completed yet. So this is what uh, the courses and the requirements that you should uh, cover by the end of summer term. Um, like, and the next, the, information on how major confirmation works. In your case, you do not need to fill anything. 
um, we will do the process of confirmation ourselves. You don't need to do anything. You just need to complete everything um, as correctly as required from you. Um, the better you do, the better it will be for like for you. Yeah. So we will check your grades. We will check your GPA in case it is required. And if everything is fine, you will stay in your major. Um, and um, if you like completed everything, then you'll be assigned faculty advisor. But however, in case something not like work as you've planned, and even by the end of the summer term, you could not uh, satisfy some of the requirements, then automatically you will be transferred to undeclared by the end of the summer term. So those who could not confirm their major, they will be transferred to SH undeclared. Here are some questions that students usually ask. So the first one, will I be able to contact, make an appointment with the academic advisor in my second year? This is for all students for, from any school, any major. So in your second year, you actually assigned um, faculty advisor. We'll be doing it um, in July, probably. So you can actually contact us for some general information. So in email or we could request an appointment. Uh, however, we ask you to address your major related questions to your faculty advisors. You'll be able to find information on your faculty advisor uh, on the registrar in personal schedule. Next question, for example, if I am yeah, like a stage science student uh, and I retook a course, but still could not confirm my major by the end of summer term, will I be able to do it in, uh, in the fall semester? Yeah? In case you state you could not confirm, can you do it in your fall semester? So students, as I said, who could not confirm their major by the end of summer term, they will be transferred to a stage undeclared. So in the fall, you can retake a course that you need to for your confirmation. However, we highly recommend you to consider another option as well. So to declare another major from uh, undeclared majors because there is a risk that you may um, not confirm the major again, that you may not pass the course or there will be um, not enough GPA if required. So that is why you should have option B as well so that you will be uh, safe you know, with another major. So please, in such case, contact your advisor. Everything should be done individually. So another question. What if I, a such undeclared student, satisfied the major declaration requirements of one of the undeclared majors, yeah, but wish to remain undeclared in the fall semester of my second year? So we also receive such questions. Um, so in case you have completed the requirement for one of the majors. So we again advise you to uh, declare, to declare your major by the beginning of fall semester. Uh, like students are usually not allowed to stay undeclared without school's permission. Yeah, you cannot just, uh, you have completed your requirements, but you decided to stay. So it's not actually allowed. It is written in the handbook that by the end of spring semester, you should declare one of the majors. So in case you decide to stay for some reason, which, which was not permitted, then it's not guaranteed that you can register for further courses. So you might not have priorities in such case, okay? Uh, then what happens if I could not make it to top 80 of PSIR major after the spring semester? So the ranking uh, top 80 will be conducted by PSIR department themselves. So they are going to rank all the students who like applied when you submit a major declaration form. Yeah, you've selected PSIR and they will be ranking you. <clears throat> Once the capacity is full, like first eight students, uh, they will stop the major declaration process. They will there will be no major declaration process after summer term. So they've um, they selected 80 students, that's it. However, you can try to declare PSIR in your second year, actually by the end of the fall semester. Uh, requirement will be for you to cover three courses with grade C or above. Uh, PLS 120, 140, 150, uh, again, GP 275, and only top 10 students in, in fall semester can declare PSIR. Okay, 
So here is the next question, next topic about retaking courses. So in case you want to retake some of the courses and it is available in summer term, so when you can retake the course. In case uh, there's a course, but you could not pass it, that is why you cannot take the next level course, then you are allowed to retake such course. For example, you need to take CSCI 152, but you could not pass CSCI 151 with C minus, then you can retake a course. And like for economic students as well. So you need B minus for um, uh, calculus one, yeah? and it is offered in summer, but you do not have B minus, then you can retake such course. So how many times can I retake a course? So there is actually no limit for uh, how many times you can retake a course. You can uh, retake it as many times as you want. However, you should check whether the course is offered in the semester you are planning to take, like in summer or in fall and so on and so on. And also this can affect your time of graduation. Since you are spending time, you cannot take the next level course because of the the one that you are retaking constantly, for example, then that can actually affect that number of credits that um, you can stay for another year. So that's why you should be, you should consider this moment as well. So how will it affect my GP and CGP? So all of your attempts, uh, and every time you take a course, it will be recorded on your transcript. It will count to your CGP and GP. So your earned credits, attempted credits, however, the only last uh, retake, retake will be counted in your final CGP in total earned credits. So let's say if you are retaking a course in summer term, then your summer term grade will be counted to your CGP. However, each time you take the course will be affected in your sum in your semester GPA. So, and there are sometimes questions about whether you need to fill in retake permission form. So, not everyone should fill this form. Only if you have um, C minus or above. So, but you need um, like grade yeah above, like not C minus then you should submit this form, retake permission form. However, if you receive F, D, or D+, you don't need to submit this form. You can automatically register for, that cor for such course. The system will allow you to do it. Again, if you receive C- uh, or above, then you should submit this form. Uh, again, about calculus one, in, in case you need it for your economics, you receive C- or you receive um, C, C plus, then you should provide, you should submit this form because you need B minus, right? So, and another topic is about transfers. So there were some questions regarding the transfer. So first of all, how can I transfer? So if you need to meet uh, transfer requirements of the major to where you want to go, where you wish to study further. So if you covered all such requirements, you've worked with your advisor, you already know, uh, you've taken those courses, you have all the grades that you need, then you can submit transfer request. You should choose transfer between majors or transfer between schools form. So if you're transfer between majors uh, within the same school, then transfer between majors. And if you're transferring from one school to another, then transfer between schools. Uh, uh, the form, yeah. So all the forms can be found in student requests panel on the registrar. So on the top, when you go to student requests, um, uh, on the top, you can see all the forms and select the ones that you need. Please attach your grades to any form. You should attach your grades in comments. So when can I initiate the process of transfer? So you can submit transfer requests starting from now till at deadline, June 10th, uh, or before the session starts, if you need to register for summer courses with your new major priorities. Yeah? For example, you don't have priority for some course, but you want to transfer and when you transfer before registration, you will have the priority of that major and can take the course that you need. So again, till at deadline, June 10th, or till May 16th. 
I guess that's it. That was the main points that we wanted to cover today. And if there are questions, so I'm opening the chat now. I know we are answering most of the questions in the chat. Oh, so okay. Yes, someone was raising a hand. Right? Yes, so those who are raising hands, we can talk to them. Kairat, yes. So we are listening to you. Hello, so I have one question. Uh, so, for example, if I'm not uh, sure whether I should uh, choose uh, PSIR or some other major, and I have completed only two courses for PSIR, so I need to complete the third course uh, in the fall, right? And uh, so can I uh, delay uh, choosing a major till fall? to complete the third course for PSIR. OK, uh, Kairat, you see there is ranking for PSIR. So and uh, now, by the end of spring term, not 80 students can declare PSIR. Yeah. So in case you've completed two courses of PLS and we see gradium and you have 275, then you can select PSIR in the major declaration form. In case you decide to wait and stay for fall, uh, as it was written in on the on the slides, only 10 students can actually be uh, given places in PSIR major. So which means your chances will be reduced like eight times. So in case you've completed everything now, so I think it will be better for you to to in if your final decision is actually declare PSIR, then it's better to do it now. Does it mm. answer your question? So, uh, so like I can't delay declaring a major right if I am not uh, sure about uh, whether I choose PSIR or, for example, sociology. Okay, the, uh, this is, yes, uh, a bit different. So in case you're not sure, then in the form, you can select two majors, as I said again. So in PS, if you are not sure about PSIR, because there is ranking, you can in the form select another major now, not mm -hmm. waiting till the end of summer term. Okay, I got it, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're welcome. Mirza. Um, hello, may I stay as undeclared now, but declare a major just after the summer term? Mm, okay, yes. So students can stay, like the latest is end of summer term, beginning of before the registration for fall starts, because you might not have priorities for the majors that let's say you want to declare sociology but you did not declare it and the registration started, you might not have priorities for sociology courses because you're not in that major. So that's that's an example, the sociology, I'm saying it as an example. So if you already know where you want to go, it's better to declare it now. So, however, yes, like the latest is summer term. But if you want to declare PSIR, there is ranking. So if they uh, have 80 students now, they will not wait for anyone in summer term. Thank you, it answers my question. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Marai? Um, can we, for example, uh, refuse to major? For example, in Google Forum, which is sociology, but then we decided that we don't want it and then refuse, or it's final decision. So how should I answer this question? So in case you are, let's say, inclining to declare one of the majors and you've already completed the requirements for it, it's better to declare it now. And in case something turns out differently, then probably you can transfer, but you should talk to your advisor. OK. So uh, may I answer this question? Um, the if you already have hundred percent sure that uh, you want to declare a major, but during the semester, for example, in your second year, if you would like to change it because you decided not to follow, 
it's possible, but there are going to be other requirements probably uh, up to the department case by case. So uh, before the start of the second semester, the, the requirements we've shown, they will be in place so you can transfer under them. But for some of the majors, requirements could change. So you have to clarify and make sure you will be able because we don't have a lot of transfers during second year. Most of the transfers happens during the first year, first semester or after second semester. Okay, mm -hmm. Aitana. Yes, I wanted to clarify the top 80 list is con uh, cons uh, gonna it, it consists of students that want to declare uh, PSIR as a major, right? Not of everybody that took the course. No, this is for those who uh, undeclared students will receive major declaration form. And if you select a PSIR in that form, then you will be ranked. If you did not select okay. it, then no, you're not ranked. And after we receive our results, if and if it's unsuccessful, we can declare other majors, right? If we have already met the requirements. So yes, you need to submit this form only once. So then you will wait for the results. If everything is fine, you can declare it successfully. You will be assigned uh, faculty advisor. If not, then you will meet with your advisor and see possibility of declaring another major. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay, we will continue, Sabina. Uh, hello. Uh, so in order to declare my major, I have to retake one course in summer. And you said that you sent a form for undeclared majors. So do I have to submit something to stay undeclared till summer term or, mm -hmm. or I have to just ignore the form? In case you're not declaring, you cannot declare a major now, then you don't need to submit that form in case you are retaking. Uh, the course in summer term, then we will get back to you in, after summer term ends, and then you will declare it once you um, like satisfy all the requirements. Okay, so I don't need to submit or write something. Yes, yes you should inform your uh, advisor about that. Uh, what if I, what if my advisor knows it? Like mm -hmm. we discussed it mm -hmm. in person. Okay. Yeah, that's so. Fine. Do I have to write an email? Or oh, something. no, you don't need to. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? Leilam asks, is there any recommended schedule for economics for other years? Uh, no, because on the career students, they have a more flexible schedule. But in your second year, you should take uh, uh, more of intermediate courses in economics, 201, 202, 211. And the other courses can vary, like electives social science selects, human selectives, the ones that you haven't covered. Mm -hmm. Turan, do you have a question? Yeah. Hello, do you hear me? Yes. So uh, the first question is, uh, what if I'm um, leaving? Like, I need to take an academic week the next semester, or I don't know exactly what semester because of exchange program. And uh, so who should I contact to tell uh, about this and just inform if my if I'm an electrical engineering major is it like the, the, the sets? Mm -hmm. well, for, sets first first of all yes you need to talk to your advisor advisor yes first of all you need to talk to your advisor uh, mm -hmm. then you will discuss the dates yeah when you leave when you return uh, in which semester you return, which course you can take in that case. Uh, then after everything, like you agree, you should then submit the form, leave of absence. However, you need to also consult with the manager of office of the registrar uh, because you need to submit the 
uh, documents that needs to be attached to your form. So yes, please work with your academic advisor first. Do you know your advisor? Okay, thanks. And the second question to her, and she said uh, that I should actually talk, um, contact uh, the School of Engineering uh, academic um, mm -hmm. kind of vice dean for academic affairs, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. Yeah, that's also a valid that you need to yeah. talk to your vice dean. Okay, and uh, actually I've got... Mm -hmm. And then the next question about the summer course uh, regarding to the academic leave, I wanted to take uh, the summer courses uh, earlier so that I won't miss my schedule. And uh, what if, for example, I miss, uh, what if there are no places for F? Kazakh, uh, I submit kind of a priority override if I yeah, if I miss some places. Okay, so actually, in case you have priority for the course, you don't need to submit priority override form. This form is usually for those who do not have priority at all. So you have priority, then you should register to like for a course according to according to the priority you have. Okay. We cannot hear you. Yeah, I I I, I heard you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I understand the internet. Okay. Ayran, do you have a question? Yes, thank you. Uh, you said that top ET students will be selected within two weeks, but what about those who will take the summer semester in order to increase the EC GPA? So again, if by the end of spring semester, top 80 students will be selected, so there will be no um, major declaration process anymore. So then you have a chance to do it in the fall semester. However, if there are no top 80 students selected right now, yeah, by, by the end of spring semester, then they, they might consider you as other students. However, if not, then you can declare PSIR in your second year, fall, like top so 10 there students. Yeah, I think so. If there isn't enough students, like for not 80 students, we can be considered. Yes. But if not, yes. we'll be automatically declared as uh, the second chosen major, yeah? Um, yes, mm -hmm. correct. So in case you decide okay. to select another major besides PSAR, mm -hmm. then if you're not in top 80, you will declare another major, the second that you select. Okay. I got it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Any other questions? I don't know. Do you have another question? No, sorry. I guess it's from the previous. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. Abdulli is asking, do we have to request permission to register for ethics? No, you can register for it as usual. Adding in as a Kazakh 300 would be great. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> but the list is already posted. So if there are some changes, you will be informed. Uh -oh. What is in priority to declare PSAR? CGPA or PLS course grace? Both, both are important. You should have at least C for uh, PLS courses in CGP should be 275 at least. Of course, the more you have, the better for you because there is ranking. Can we make an appointment with another academic advisor in case our advice is temporary unavailable? Mire, yes, you can do so. Uh, what are the priorities for BUS 101? BUS 101. You have third priority. All first year students have third priority. Anar. Hey, Aina, can you please one more time show the priorities? So, 
core course is third priority um, for lab chemistry. There is first and second priority, first priority biological science, chemistry, medical science. Other students are in second priority. So what else? Rhetoric and composition course. Knew some students are in first priority. Other students in second. Uh, in history of custom, everyone has second priority. Ethics course, you have first priority. For CSEI 152, computer science, robotics, engineering students have first priority in case uh, you want to transfer and you need to take this course, then you can, and you have to have no priority, then you should submit priority override form. If you don't know how to do it, please ask your advisor. Basic Kazakh, Academic Kazakh 1, Academic Kazakh 2, you have second priority. Uh, 371 Kazakh language, you have third, second priority. Calculus 1, Calculus 2, and physics. Thank you, Aina. So there is a question <clears throat> from ACL. I would like to also clarify it for those who didn't understand. So Asir is asking, can you repeat the answer for the question about staying undeclared for the fall semester? Is it possible not to fill the form if you're not decided yet? So Asir, um, there are several uh, kind of ways. So we have to consider your case. In case you have all the um, completed requirements for one of the majors, you have to declare your major by the start of the fall semester. So you only have time, uh, summer term, to think about your choice uh, and decide by the start of the full semester. If you haven't completed some of the requirements or you need to take additional course in the full semester for a specific major, you need to discuss it first with your advisor and let the advisor know that why you're staying for the fall. So it's only permitted for specific cases depending on the student situation. It's not only just you want to stay undeclared. It's not going to be allowed. You only allowed to stay undeclared until the end of uh, start of the fall semester. That's it. If you still deciding between several majors, you can think until start of the fall semester, August. Uh, if you will not declare by that time, we will ask you, and school will be uh, persisting on declaring your major. In case you need to take some additional courses that are not offered in the summer term and you have to take specific course, you need to talk to advisor and decide your next steps for the fall semester. Uh, for those who are staying for the fall semester, you will be giving only fall semester to stay undeclared. By the end of the fall semester, we ask you to declare your major. So you have to have a plan A, plan B, in case plan A doesn't work out, you need to have an option B. For those students who are now uh, choosing one major, but still deciding maybe they're going to change their mind, maybe on the second day they will be, you can actually apply for transfer. So you don't have to stay undeclared, you can transfer again. Is this possible? If you fill out the requirements, you can transfer after your first semester of the second year within the school. So I would advise you to declare if possible. And then if you are thinking about other majors, you can transfer on your second year. I um, hope it's clear, but let your advisor know in case there are any questions on this particular thing. Norai, do you have a question? Uh, yes, if we have, um, if we are struggling with the choice of the major, should we contact um, our academic advisor or peer advisor? You can contact your advisor, yeah. Uh, I mean, academic advisor. Academic advisor, yeah. Okay. So, like, between two options, you can choose one of the majors that you want to declare more, yeah? So, in case, as Almira, like, as Almira said, so in case you then decide to change your major, you can transfer. 
Okay, thank you. So we will probably do another uh, forum for those students who are gonna stay undeclared until the end of the summer term. So we will do another forum uh, by the end of the summer term. Again, for those who are undeclared to be able to declare their major before the start of the fall semester. So please uh, wait email from us, uh, which will be probably right after summer term, end of July. There's a question, can we stay in dormitory if we take ethics as it is online? So actually, it depends. So they might consider your case, but as you know, if it's online, then you have, you might have not such like high priority. So you should consult with student housing on this regard. Okay, any other questions? So the image declaration form will be sent after the session. The deadline is next Thursday, May 19th at 2 p.m. Okay, if there are, yes, we are actually available. You can make an appointment or send an email so in case you have questions. If there are no questions, then thank you for coming today. So in case there are some questions here, you can always contact us. Okay, have a good day. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Thank Goodbye. you. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.